Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we are going to do something that you probably shouldn't do at home. Uh, these here in front of me are a stack of three of those little 10 amp ESCs I showed off in the sizing ESCs video. Now I am uh, just about to get started building some beetle weights and there are a couple of people who I fight uh, combat robots with who are also about to fight uh, beetle weights and these things are quite a nice cheap um, alternative uh, or quite a nice cheap option for an ESC and they have that ability to run up to 10 amps so they should be quite nice for a beetle weight. The only problem is that these things are rated to 2S which is this guy here. So that is 7.2 volts uh, nominal, no sorry 7.4 volts nominal and 8.2 or 8.8 .8 or something or 8.4 volts when fully charged and that's fine for ant weights but a lot of people want to run bigger batteries they want to run stuff like this guy which is 3s which is 11.1 .1 volts nominal and up about 12 volts fully charged so I figured I want to see what happens when you actually do try to run these things at higher voltages than they're rated for. Most likely something in here is going to go pop, it's probably going to get quite hot, but I do still want to test these things out and I'm going to test them out using the beetle shell that I created a little while ago. So this is the, the beetle shell, it's still uh, in a half finished state, the electronics never got plugged in or completed. So that's what we're going to do today, we're going to modify this thing up, drop it back to being just two ESCs in a pile, hook it up to this beetle and then we're going to run it on the 2S first, run it on this guy, make sure everything's working. Once we know everything's working, we're going to overvolt it up to 3S. If it survives this, which I don't know, that's kind of questionable, I have a feeling something is going to catch on fire, uh, so please don't try this at home. Um, but if it does manage to survive this, then we are going to go all the way up and we're going to overvolt it to 4S. So this is going to be double its rated voltage. If this doesn't make it catch on fire, then these things are going to be pretty safe to run on 3S. But that's why we're doing this experiment. We're going to see just what happens when we do overvolt these things. Like I said, I think on 3S these are going to get a little hot uh, and they might be okay to run a little hot for a three minute bout. But, like I said, that's why we're doing this testing. We're gonna see if these things actually can or cannot run on that level, level of voltage. So I decided to voice over this bit because it was a little bit loud outside and I'm not sure my voice would have picked up. So right here we're looking at doing the 2S LiPo battery. So this is basically just a test to make sure I've got everything plugged in and working correctly and also so that I know what 
this kind of test body robot ends up feeling like in terms of driving because 2S, these ESCs are definitely rated for 2S, so they should be fine. As you can see, it's quite zippy and I quickly get kind of out of frame and I have to pull this robot back in. Also, one of the things here is I realize the uh, wires from my receiver are kind of dangling around all over the place and I'm kind of driving over them at some points. Uh, so I do tape these back up for the next attempt when we go over to the 3S. But I'm just having a bit of a, a play around here, like I said, trying to work out how well it drives and how well it doesn't drive and all that kind of stuff. It's still very back heavy, especially with only the 2S battery. It is the lightest of all of the batteries that I have, or at least all the batteries that I'm testing. So now we're going for the 3S battery. So this is the one that I'm actually kind of interested in because all of my Beatles, I think, are going to be running off 3S. I might jump some of them up to 4S in the future, but for now, uh, 3S is all we're going to go for. And as you can just see, just then, I actually quickly tested the uh, heat of those ESCs to make sure that I had some form of baseline so that once we completed some of these testing, I knew uh, what that was at the start. Now, as you can see, this is immediately so much faster and way more skittish than it was uh, on the 2S battery. And that's good. That's kind of what we wanted to see. We wanted to see that increase in speed. Uh, so much so, actually, that I'm really having trouble controlling it. With everything back in, I decided to do a little bit more driving at 3S because nothing was really hot or warm to the touch and um, yeah, the, uh, the unfortunate throw of the battery and all of the electronics meant that I hadn't really tested it for a decent-ish length of time. So this time around I was a little bit more careful and spent most of the time running this 3S battery kind of driving back and forth and stuff and then uh, immediately kind of forgot the lesson that I learned by doing the spin, as you'll see in a little bit here. Uh, but I was just kind of messing around with it, seeing uh, if I can get that inrush current happening, getting the good little inrush currents, because those are the bits that are actually the, the, the long, largest amount of current, so the most amount of power going through those ESC. So I was really, really pushing for that and trying to get those to work. Um, and see if I could burn these ESCs out, and they held up pretty well, even uh, with all of this stuff that I'm doing, going back and forth lots and lots of times, and um, not quite stalling the motors out because they are slipping on this concrete, but getting a lot of that inrush current going, they held up pretty well on this 3S, and then I decided to spin, and that was a bad idea. <laughs> this actually even ripped out one of the cables, so I had to resolder everything. So with everything soldered back up, I decided to move just straight on to the 4S because this is really where the big test lies here. If these ESCs can handle this 4S battery, then they shouldn't have any problem handling the 3S battery. Uh, so like I said, it was just a case of trying these guys out and seeing how they went. Um, and it was interesting. I didn't really feel quite as much speed speed with this one, or at least not quite the same increase in speed, I should say, as uh, going from 2S to 3S. And I was getting a little bit of weird behavior, and I'm not sure if it was receiver or if I was just being too kind of, um, I don't know, twitchy on the trigger because it was actually moving relatively fast at this point. Like I said, there was a speed increase. It just didn't seem quite as marked as the 2S to 3S jump. Um, and yeah, I was also trying to be very careful not to spin around in circles because I knew that uh, with this huge heavy battery on the front, um, I was definitely going to throw all of my electronic components anywhere and everywhere if I decided to do that nice little spin. So I did a little bit of this testing here, driving back and forth, and like I said, it was okay. I got a lot of wheel slip, and maybe that's where all of the speed went. I got a lot of spinning of these wheels, which is quite interesting considering I'm on concrete and I'm running silicon tires around the outside of those plastic tires, so I thought I should be okay in terms of wheel slip, but I did still just get a lot of it, so maybe that's where all of the acceleration went in this thing. Oops, and hit the camera there too. Uh, so it's about here that I decide I probably should actually have a quick feel of those ESCs and see how those ESCs are going and this is actually kind of a, a bit of a mistake because we come over here I get down to the robot and as I start touching things smoke erupts or it's pretty hard to see here because I'm outside but smoke does come from the ESC hence why I very quickly unplug everything 
Turns out it was a wire, which we'll see in a second. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, yeah, that um, cable burnt out on one of these. So you can see here that my cable actually burnt. The connection where I'd soldered it burnt and the cable broke. And that's because I was using these little um, Arduino connector things and these cables themselves aren't rated for as much current and as much voltage as I was putting through them. So the fact that it only burnt at one end is actually not a bad thing. Um, the ESCs themselves, they smell a little burny and I'm not sure if that is because of this wire or if it's because something inside has gone bust. I can't see anything broken in terms of uh, any of the chips. All the chips seem to be okay and all seem to be fine. Uh, the one ESC that didn't have the cables burned is still running correctly, although uh, as you can see here it's thrown off some of its um, cable protection or soldering protection, so I was a little bit worried about that and stopped. So, in conclusion, can you run these things above 2S? Maybe. Um, they seem to run okay at 3S. They gave these motors a lot of speed, so much so that I was having trouble controlling this thing, as you saw. Um, and yeah, they didn't really seem to get too hot, didn't get too warm, ran relatively cold the whole time. They seem to be okay, and they of course went up and handled that 4S until the cables that I was using gave way. So, can you run these things on 2S? Uh, or 3S, yeah, probably. I'm not going to give you a definitive yes you can because um, these are of course cheap Chinese ESCs. Your results may differ from mine. Um, the things you get from China can be a little bit interesting and all over the place in quality and control of that quality. So my testing would indicate that these things can run at 3S. Uh, I would suggest that they'll probably have a shorter lifespan, but if you're using them in something like a combat robot, it's probably not your biggest issue. Um, but yeah, so like I said, they probably should hold at 3S, but I'm not going to give you any guarantees because I really just can't do that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm actually going to try these things out now myself. I'm going to jam them in a combat robot, probably this one or the revamp of this one using 3S, and we'll see how we go. I also need to do something about these wheels because they really, really don't have enough traction. You can see in some of those clips I was just spinning these wheels wildly when I went up to 3S and 4S. Um, but there you go, so that has been this quick little investigative video uh, into these things. Oh, and there you go, I actually burnt another one of those, I didn't even realise that one was gone. So, yeah. Um, like I said, can these things run on that? Probably, but you also need to make sure that your wiring to your motors is sufficient gauge to actually run all of the current and voltage that you are planning on running. So there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.